Okay, so I'm going to go out and do a little sewing outside in the garden. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, so I'm hoping to get it seeds in there so they can get rained in. Rain seems to do better for seeds, plants, whatever. I can I can water till my eyeballs are bleeding. One rain shower and it looks like, you know, the garden is brand spanking new and never been touched by human hands. So in some ways gardening can be extremely annoying. Other ways it's very satisfying. So you get to vent a lot of frustration sometimes. All right, so I went through and I chose what I want to plant today. And some of this is stuff that is, well, all of it is good for a fall garden. Um, I may be a little bit late on planting some up. I'm taking a gamble on when the first frost is going to be. But all this stuff is pretty frost uh, resistant kind of deal. They're, they're pretty good with, with gentle frosting, not freezing down to 12 degrees or anything like that. But, uh, so what my hope is, this is the 4th of September. I'm going to get these hopefully all planted before the rains start and, uh, get them in. And you've kind of got this weird here in Tennessee. There's very good chance that September is going to be still really hot temperatures and dry and no rain and stuff like that and the, and the fall garden's, garden's not going to do well. I do have some plants that I have started indoors that I also need to get in the ground because but I'm working on getting space for that pulled out. So uh, here's a thing, couple things I have. So this one I've got a couple different kinds of spinach reason why I chose spinach, I actually was able to grow spinach last fall rather well. Still had plants in the ground come winter when it got really cold. We did have some pretty good, you know, down into the teens kind of weather. I had a, I call it my Quonset hut. It's just a little accordion contraption with a wire half moon shape configuration with a uh, frost fabric going through it so it makes makes nice little 18 inch tall tunnel I put it over half of my spinach bed last year and the spinach that was undercover bounced back quicker but the spinach that was under not undercover all winter um, it also bounced back but it took a little bit longer than the stuff that was covered so I've got the Bloomsdale long standing uh, spinach, which is going to take about 41 days. Yeah, and this is another thing too. For those of you, some of these seed packets will sh give you a lot of information. This is from Territorial Seeds, Lakeside Spinach. So it says 25 to 30 days. And then you get others like seeds and such that you have to basically go to the website and collect the information. So basically what I do is when I get a shipment in, uh, Hello, free advertising for seeds and such. Um, I'll go in and write down when I bought it, the year, you know, so I have the year on it at least. Um, weirdly enough, seeds and such never puts the sell by date on their packets, at least not that I have found so far. <laughs> So I usually end up writing that on. I didn't do it with this one. Um, I have a feeling that this is an older one. So I'm just basically going to uh, plant some seeds and see if the seeds actually come up. If I don't get any germination this year, I may just get rid of this pack and keep going. Uh, and do need to look up how long seeds are good for, spinach seeds. But... Uh, for some reason, I just found this packet, and I don't think I bought it recently. So I think it's something I've had for a while, and I just kind of uncovered. So the Bloomsdale is an old standard. It takes about 41, so about six weeks to grow, to, to be useful. Although you can harvest spinach any 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 stage if you want to wait for the bigger leaves and get a, a good take. You can wait till the thing, but a lot of people just does. 
This is Lakeside. This is a um, F1 hybrid. I believe Bloomsdale is an open pollinator or an heirloom kind of deal. So that may be why I, I had it. Get you back in here. So Lakeside takes about 25, 30 days. So in about a month, you know, I'll have some spinach going. And what I'm trying to do, since I have such a hard time labeling things, I went to Dollar Tree and I got these little popsicle sticks. I think there's like a hundred of them for, I think when I bought these, Dollar Tree was still Dollar Tree, not Dollar Twenty Five Tree. And so I got these, I actually got several packs. I think I'm on my last pack that I got for the whole dollar. But uh, yeah, I just buy these. I should have used a grease pencil, but I can't find it. So I used my Sharpie in blue color, unfortunately. I can tell it says spinach, but any other human being would not. And that's Blooms for Bloomsdale. And then I've got one for the, the um, Lakeside too. And then I just went ahead and made all my popsicle sticks. And now I've just mixed it all up for all this stuff. Okay, so two kinds of spinach. I've got radishes. Um, there's a Halloween mix, which I grew this past spring that I think were like yellows and blacks and purples and that kind of stuff. Dragon, um, which has really red skin. And I got this from Baker Creek in a package that I bought earlier this spring. So it's a free pack. And this is Japanese wasabi radish. This is not actually wasabi. It's just supposedly a, a spicy kind of radish, daikon kind of radish. Uh, that I don't think I planted this spring. I didn't see any, so I'll let you know. And then this is just uh, pine tree. Pine tree seeds, uh, garden seeds. Um, that was like one of my first seed companies that I really started buying from. Uh, places like Burpees and parks and stuff like that have their uses, but um, what pine tree and also seeds and such does is, uh, and we'll see if that continues with the recession going on, but they will do packets of seeds that, you know, this has, well, this one has a thousand seeds in it and I probably paid two or three dollars. Now granted it's only, you know, radishes, but I like radishes. I bought this in 2021. I've still got most of the pack left, so we'll plant that. So pine tree garden seeds, uh, seeds and such. Um, and now I've discovered Baker Creek. Uh, I love Baker Creek because they have free shipping on pretty much everything that you buy. They're over in, in Missouri, which is west of me, but it's fairly close. Uh, but Everything so far that I've gotten from them has been really good. Uh, who else do I have in here? Gurneys. This is really old seed. This is a snow pea, pea variety called Avalanche that basically I'm trying to lose up, use up, but I don't use that many snow peas. So I, yeah. so, uh, I keep thinking that, you know, I'm going to run out or the seed's not going to be viable anymore and it just keeps going. So I'm okay with it. So we've got four kinds of radishes. I've got the avalanche snow peas, and then I've got the, the sugar sprint snap peas that I'm gonna grow on one of my cattle panel tra trellises. I'm gonna do the sugar sprint on one side and then the avalanche on the other. I've got some bok choy that I'm going to direct sow. I have usually in the past Seed the, seeded them in seed trays in the spring and then tried to get out to plant outside and time gets away from me and by the time I'm getting the stuff planted it starts bolting and going to seed. So I'm going to try direct sowing this time and see what happens. I've got a few different kinds of lettuce. Um, we've got winter density which is a butter coast cos basically looks kind of like a little head romaine lettuce. This is, I grew this last year and it's, and it's pretty, uh, uh, winter hardy. Um, I didn't cover it at all. It doesn't last all winter long like the spinach did for me. 
and come back, but it lasted long enough that I was able to get lettuce. Um, so winter density, so winter's in the title. Uh, another pine tree, uh, the pine tree winter mix. It's a leaf lettuce. And then little gem, I, this is a kind of a romaine, but it's smaller heads of romaine. And you can start harvesting in about 50 days, which is about how long I have until my first frost date. So we'll get out here and start seeing what we can put. Right. So I still have some carrots in here. I was gonna let this one go to flower, but I think I'm gonna just go ahead and harvest everything, see what it looks like, and be done with carrots for the year. This is Uzbeki, Uzbekistan Golden, Maker Creek. Not very big, so maybe Uzbekistan Golden is not the variety it's, oops, for me. I have a feeling this was a escapee. And there it goes, a little bit bigger. Time to make some carrot cake. Oh, come here, guys. And for those of you who are afraid of having to thin carrots, this was a row that I just, you know, sprinkled in there. I tried to be as sparse as I possibly could but you run the risk of some of the things not germinating and then even after they germinate they might not keep going oh, that's a little, little big one oh that's split all right so dry over here. Well, I'm sure this is so interesting. So I'll show you what I get after I pull this all up. Okay, so there's my harvest. It's about maybe a pound, pound and a half. Not too bad for the end of the year. I've already cut off the bronze and put them in my compost bucket and go over and dump it in. Gotten big clumps of dirt off. I'll probably take it and hose it out. The garden hose. And I'll take it upstairs and clean them up. And probably put them in the food processor. And chop them up. And make some carrot cake. Eventually. So there's what's left. So about a pound and a half of smallish carrots in a two foot spot. So I have to go up and write in my little journal, garden journal, that the Uzbekistani gold likes to be spaced out. So I'll know that for next time if they taste good. So if they don't taste that great, I might not grow them next year. So now I've got this bed. I've got rutabaga that I did place correct spacing the seeding and basically what I did is I just planted two seeds every like three inches or three or four inches and then the weaker of the two seeds I did pull up and this little thing right here is a buckwheat that's coming up so that's gonna come out because buckwheat season's over. So what I'm going to do since let's feel adjust that spot. Actually the stuff underneath the cup the grass clippings is nice and moist. So I think what I will do is I will bring the hose over and I'm gonna get some more yeah I don't know. 
or the chances that between that and that is going to be the exact spacing I need for what I'm going to be planting. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go see if I can get something to put over there, at least have it there in case I don't have the exact spacing. So yeah, so cover that up, pull up the little buckwheat seedling, and get a couple, there's a couple other little weeds I've seen growing on the perimeter. Get out of it, and get it out now while I can see it. And then I will water the bed real well in preparation, in case it does not rain tonight. And then we'll come back and plant. Okay, so I have prepared the bed. I have pushed all of the grass clippings that I'm using for mulch aside to make furrows. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more strips that are eh, about six inches apart, which most of this stuff is going to be leafy green stuff anyway. It might be a little bit more, a little close than I optimally need, but again, I don't know if some of this stuff is actually going to, and I was right where I needed my furrow was not where I had just picked those carrots. Okay, well, it's only in the 70s and it's nice and cloudy and got a little wind. I shouldn't be sweating as much as I am, but I am. I won't even turn the camera around so you can see how bad I look right now because you've seen me before. All right, so I've dampened the soil down. And I need to get out here and weed back around the pathways. I do some of it. I go back to do the rest of it, and the stuff that I've already mowed has already gone back. <sighs> Anyone want to rent out their husband or boyfriend? I should have had kids, so I'd have grandkids to guilt into doing it for me. Alright. So, get out my seeds and figure out how much I have to do what and where, and we'll be right back. Okay, once again, forgot I had my camera with me. So I got most everything planted. Still have to do the less. So I had a kind of a little change up. The bok choy that I thought I had, I only had like two or three seeds in the packet. Don't know why I didn't plant them all. But I just kind of threw them over in an empty-ish bed. And it's kind of one of those things of Vaya con Dios with it. So basically what I've decided to do, so I've got the rutabaga already growing in this outer row. And we determined we already had put a muffler on it. I don't like noisy trucks. So finally we determined that we had two, four, six, eight, ten rows here, about four feet wide. You'll notice that I don't come all the way to the edge because those tend to be either A, where the grass comes up. You can see there's some Johnson grass here that's trying to get in here. I keep it weed whacked, but occasionally it'll go up under the board and try to come in. So I pull it out. So better that there's not a lot of growing things that I actually want to grow there that I'm pulling up by mistake. Hang on, I just had a piece of my own hair fly in my mouth. All right, so what I decided to do with the remaining nine little rows is I have done alternate uh, radishes since they're usually the first up and the first out. So we've got, if I can remember correctly, we've got the Halloween mix and then there's the dragon radish, which is red with white flesh and then just a mix of long cylindrical kind, the little short fat round ones. Um, I know we're out of bird seed, leave me alone. And then since the wasabi radish takes longer to develop than the rest of the radishes, I just put it, it's two months instead of like one month or so. So I just put this on the very end 
so it wouldn't be in my way. I also had fewer seeds than I did have the rest of the radishes, so I was a little less liberal with my spacing. So do that. All right. So you'll notice on the radishes and the other stuff that I planted, I've already put some uh, soil over the top of the thing, just eh, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. So I've got these three little rows here that I'm going to do my three lettuces. And then I planted, since I don't have my bok choy, I've got um, my Bloomsdale spinach here and my space spinach already planted here. So I just need to finish up my lettuce, get them covered, get the labels in so I don't forget again. And uh, I do have the labels this time. I've kind of tucked them up underneath. So, fair chance it may stay out of the elements. We'll see. Otherwise, I'll go up and kind of, I take into kind of drawing a little diagram on paper and putting it in my little garden notebook for cases like this, but then I lose the, the piece of paper, so. All right, so get the lettuce planted. Again, just gonna sprinkle seeds along the row of each type. Put some of the, uh, this is the pro mix stuff that I used with the rooting Tree root cutting, yeah, fruit tree cutting rootings that I did yesterday. And uh, just that was what was left over, so I just sprinkled it over the top. Once that is done, once those three rows are done and covered, I will then sprinkle the entire bed with water, get the um, soil that's covering it nice and moist. Hope that it rains. If it doesn't, I'll be probably out here tomorrow to check, see how soil is doing. But that old rain just does it so much better than I ever could. And it has much more patience than I do. So that's what I'm going to do. So hopefully, within you know, check out here in another couple of weeks. I'll show you what progress I've made, if any. And if I don't have progress, I will plant something else. So I'm probably going to do, if any of this survives into winter, Lettuce might. I don't think the radishes will last that long, but rutabaga definitely will. Hey guys, so that last video clip had technical difficulties at the very end. You didn't lose much, so don't worry about it. Okay, so this is just an update three days later from the beginning of this video. Um, Today was a cloudy, off and on rainy, a little windy, but not too bad day. And now it's evening, the sun's going down. Sun's going down and I came out just kind of check and see what the rain level was and quarter of an inch, which is good. And happened to look over and my seeds are coming up. So pretty much everything, that's the wasabi radish. These are the three lettuces that I will have to thin out. Here's a radish. Skip one. Radish. Teeny tiny little spinach plants coming up. This is the lakeside spinach. spinach. More radishes and then of okay. course an update on the greens, fall green bed. This little row that's partially in shadow is the wasabi radish. That's coming up well, not bulbing yet, but we're okay with that. This row is the little gem romaine lettuce that it's come up and what I'm probably gonna do is when I get a little bit larger, I'm gonna prick some of them out and fill in the blank spaces. I don't know. I don't think my seed spread was that patchy, but it could also be that the seed may be a little old, so I'll go look on the date and see what's going on there. This is just... Yeah, where am I? Yeah. This row is just leaf lettuce. And I'm just going to let it go like this. The stuff that's at this end that's a little bit more 
better spaced will actually grow up into actual heads. And the stuff down here I'll just do as a kind of a cut and come again kind of deal. This is the row with my uh, winter density lettuce. Uh, winter density, if I remember correctly, is like a romaine and it's just a little bit more cold hardy than other romaines are. And I don't know why there's that blink spot, but again, I'll have to be, I'll be pricking out some of these, possibly transport planting them to other spots in the garden here and there, if I can remember. But uh, yeah, so winter, winter density, I know that's new seed. Uh, this is radish, and that's just a mix. I believe that's from pine tree. And this is my row. <laughs> that I had my Bloomsdale spinach on. I had, looks like three little spindly little seedlings. I'm contemplating just going ahead and taking them out and just planting a row of uh, carrots in here because they do well in winter time too, as long as I can get them going before it gets too cool. This is another row of radishes. This is the uh, Halloween mix, I believe, or the dragon. Which one is it? Dragon. Dragon. So these are going to be the nice red ones. This is the row with my lakeside spinach. Again, bank blank spaces. Not too sure what's going on there, but what I'm going to do is when they get to be a little bit bigger size, I'm going to prick some of them out and put them, space them out a little bit better. Spinach does really well over winter in my place. And then this is, this is the Halloween radish and then the very end with some caterpillar bites to them. I went through yesterday and was plucking off a few. I sprayed them with BT. Just watered them this morning so they're still a little wet so later on tonight I guess before it gets dark I'll come out and get some more BT to replenish it. That's my rutabaga. Uh, so this bed's doing well and it just depends on how Soon winter gets here and get some row cover to put down all four corners. Hey, I look kind of like Darth Vader here. Go, I am your gardener. All right, so coming along, the uh, between the caterpillars that have all of a sudden just appeared and grasshoppers. Grasshoppers have started showing up. I mean, huge ones that scare the crap out of me every once in a while. They jump up into my face. Not cool. Alright, so this is one of my little white plastic barrels that I've had forever. You know, don't go assuming, you know, all plastic is all bad. It's not. You know, yes, I definitely wish there was less of it in the, on the planet, but in the meantime, so I've had these here for They've been in use for a good six years, showing no sign really of breaking down. They've got a... Hello, Miss Liz. What are you doing? You helping me garden? She says, no, I want you to go upstairs and feed me. You promised me canned food. Don't have any canned food. So, basically what I do with these guys, and here's the bed. This is what... This bed, before I got to it yesterday morning kind of look like this bed. These are just green onions that have gotten way too old. I might be able to salvage some of the greens, but for the most part these are just going to get yanked out and composted. Uh, you can see all the, the dry stuff to it. I would leave them here to let them flower, but I think it's a little late for that to be happening and I want to free it up for another one of these. So basically what I did with this one yesterday, this had leaks in it that I let go too long. I planted them too early this this spring, and I let them go too long. They were kind of getting kind of tough, and they hadn't gone through a frost and all that kind of stuff to make it taste better. So uh, that got, ended up getting composted. So what I did is I just pulled everything out that was green. I think I had a, a 
old eggplant in here that had was spent so I went ahead and I pulled that out quite some time ago so it was already so I went to my handy dandy pile of compost that I had purchased and had delivered last spring still have a lot of it left so little does go a long way even when you are filling raised beds so what I did was I topped off the uh, I of course kind of scrambled up pulled weeds any weeds there were there weren't a lot of weeds I heaped up a um, two or three inches kind of because it you can see how deep this one gets down I mean it's down a good four or five possibly even six inches from the rim you don't want it to all the way up to the top of the rim um, but you do want it higher than this and you can see this is it's drying up so it's pulling away from the sides and that kind of stuff you want to mulch it better than I was able to do this spring and summer so I topped it up with compost I mixed in some um, alfalfa pellets some worm castings and some uh, organic uh, fertilizer and kind of mixed that up a little bit got the hose out drenched it really good so the soil was nice and moist further down um, and then I went and got this is a little uh, purple sprouting broccoli plant that I've I've uh, been growing inside I've hardened it off yes 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 I have and uh, planted it I decided not to put anything around it because I just want to see if maybe putting too much in one of these beds is too much for them and they dry out that much quicker but and I also got some grass clippings and mulched around it this little thing over here in the little styrofoam cup my little vitex here had babies so I pulled up one and planted it in this little cup and I'm just sticking it there just to keep it out in the sun so it and then I'll if it survives I'll see what I want to do about fall and where I'm going to put it for the winter and all that kind of stuff um, the vitex nagunda these are one of those plants that are really good for the bees late win late summer and it's still going I don't know if you can see but there's bees going back and forth and other pollinators not as not as much as they had been earlier but uh, yeah and then you just come out I'll, I'll just come out every day and pull aside the mulch a little bit the little con the grass clippings here check to make sure that the moisture level in the soil is okay and if it needs needs a little bit more I hose it down I also gave it a little uh, foliar feed with uh, uh, compost tea dilute compost tea so this thing should have more than enough food to get it through the growing phase before it goes into winter and then I put this tomato cage over it and then my purpose is I'm going to these things are supposed to be uh, hardy down to 18 degrees Fahrenheit never grown this before so I don't know so if we do get any really humongous big old frost I may come over here and drape it with some uh, frost fabric and stuff like that just to see if it'll save its life and then I figure when it gets to growing again in the spring it'll have something to kind of cling to and hold it upright so it doesn't flop over too much again haven't grown purple sprout the purple sprouting broccoli before okay guys well I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe to my channel I can use all the friends I can get and I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.